And I would think, well, how does Father Brose know this, you know? And then I remembered, he doesn't know. I haven't told anybody these deep questions that I have in my heart. And so it was totally the Holy Spirit at work. Hello, and welcome to Kept in Her Heart, where we talk about all things faith-related. Today, Lacey joins us to share her exciting journey from Catholic to New Age to on-fire Catholic. And all of this was through the grace of God, the intervention of a friend, and a really good penance. Welcome, Lacey. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks for having me. Yeah, could you share your story with us? Sure. Um, well, I grew up Catholic. I was born and raised um, Catholic. I was a cradle Catholic. Mm -hmm. um, we stopped going to Mass uh, when I was in the second grade. Mm. We had taken a family vote and decided we weren't going to go to Mass anymore. Um, so we became what we call Christers, you know, Christmas and Easter Catholics. And um, I remember there just being a grief in my heart. You know, I just really missed um, the thought of going to church. I didn't know what it was about Mass that I liked, but there was something that I really liked and enjoyed about it. Did you vote no then? Yes, I voted no. <laughs> I didn't win because I was the only one in the van that voted no. Mm. Um, yeah, and then um, later on, I decided to start going to church on my own again, right around the age of 16. Mm -hmm. And um, then during my grandpa's funeral, my aunt had act asked me to be the lector. Mm. So it was the first time I'd ever lectured and loved that. And so I started lecturing for church and just kind of you know, fell in love with the Catholic faith. And I had a friend that was slowly leading me on the sidelines, teaching me about the rosary and the saints and different Bible stories that I had never heard mm. um, for the first time in my life. So um, that was such a grace and a blessing. And it really piqued my curiosity. Um, and then I went off to school um, to be a massage therapist. So, uh, and there, like most people, I kind of drifted and fell away from my faith again. And mm. Yeah, just didn't have those strong connections and then was being just inundated with all this new age stuff and kind of started to adopt some of those philosophies and those practices and it really left a heaviness and a burden and you know just a yuck over my life mm. um, fast forward uh, to you know meeting my husband uh, jason uh, we were he told me when we first got married that he would never become catholic and I wasn't really practicing my Catholic faith, so I didn't really care anyways. I thought, oh, all I need is Jesus. Um, and anyways, and then I went and visited that same friend from high school that had led me, you know, to pray the rosary and whatever. And uh, she suggested that I go to confession. And so I went to, the com to confession, and it was my first time entering back into the Catholic faith again mm. um, for my penance. A priest had me go to daily mass every day for a month. Wow. And I didn't kill anybody. I didn't think about killing anybody. And I thought it was a pretty hefty, odd penance because I had been to confession several times, you know, before that. And yeah. it's usually pray to hell, Mary's and one our father. And, you know, you're yeah. good to go. Um, but I really think it was the Holy Spirit at work there. Mm. Uh, it was just what I needed. It was the food that I was looking for and just fell in love with it. And all the questions that I would have for God, there would be an answer. Either the priest would talk about it in his homily or there'd be some pamphlet or something at the back of church sitting there. Uh, and so I just would suck it up and read it and just enjoy it. And I would think, well, how does Father Brose know this? You know? And then I remembered he doesn't know. I haven't told anybody these deep questions that I have in my heart. And so it was totally the Holy Spirit at work and you know, him just implementing and placing these things there when I needed them most. And at daily mass, I prayed for my husband's conversion every day for that month. And during this time, my husband's going through his own conversion that mm. I'm not even aware of. And God put some different people in our lives to really help, you know, further that conversion. Um, today, those people are still our really good friends. Also during that time um, of, you know, coming into the Catholic faith, I, I was still like had one foot kind of in the New Age world and one foot in the Catholic world and mm -hmm. and at one of those early moments I uh, aborted our first child. I had some fear and some confusion come out about something and you know decided I we can't do this right now and I thought it was just tissue and you know so I, I aborted that first baby and it was a chemical abortion. Nonetheless, it was still an abortion. And then it wasn't too long after that that I ended up reading this article on what does a baby feel while being aborted. Mm -hmm. And I just wept and I cried and was, why does the world not know this? Mm -hmm. why, why does the world not know what a baby experiences 
um, that it's not just tissue, the thing doesn't just disappear, it doesn't just dissolve. Uh, and they talked about the silent scream, you know, mm -hmm. so the baby recoiling in the mother's womb and um, opening its mouth, you know, and feeling that pain. They talked about it often being ripped from limb to limb. Mm -hmm. That it's, it's really a gruesome, um, you know, thing that is so sad that our world just doesn't even know anything about. And so I wrestled with those questions of what does that make me? You know, does that make me a murderer? And who am I? And is there a place for me to be forgiven, in, you know, in heaven? And um, what about this child? You know, where are they? And what's happened to them? And there's, they have no name. And, and so a priest had recommended that I went to um, Rachel's Vineyard, mm -hmm. which is a healing retreat center for women that have gone through an abortion. Mm -hmm. And I found it very healing. Um, it gave me the opportunity to hear other women share stories similar to my own. It gave me an opportunity to just grieve, you know, that whole weekend. I ended up naming the baby, um, grieving with Jason. Um, and now today we feel that we have a saint in heaven watching over us. My husband and I have um, four living children and, the, you know, the one in heaven. Um, yeah, and so often we will call on him for prayers and um, we don't know for sure that it was a him. However, we have high reason to suspect that it was a boy. And, and kind of going back to Jason going through his own conversion through all of that, we were so hungry for truth. Like with a capital T, we just wanted to know what was true. And the church that we had been going to just wasn't doing it for us. It wasn't fulfilling us. And so we just kept seeking, you know, and asking all those really hard questions and found answers and freedom and peace and solace. Um, within the Catholic faith. Yeah, and I was so hungry for that truth. I went on to study theology of the body. Mm, and, so good. Yes, so good. And that just brought even a more complete full picture of who we are in God and who I am and how much he loves me with my mistakes and all mm -hmm. and how much grace and mercy he just has for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so that was beautiful. I remember even feeling convicted that I needed to share with my family the truth about abortion and what it was. And I don't think they knew, you know, mm -hmm. like they think they just told me what they thought they knew, right? right? right. Like I think so often we do that, like we think we know the truth and maybe we really don't. And I don't know if it converted them any, at least I felt the burden was off of me, you know, and mm -hmm. um, I, I could be free of, of that responsibility. When I was going to daily mass in that first month, at the end of that month, this woman shows up and yeah. she brings her children yeah. to, to, faith, to, the, to church. And I was like, no, please don't be there for me. Please don't be there for me. Because I was just so much enjoying Jesus, you know, just yeah. me and Jesus and my, little, my littlest son, um, our old, he's now our oldest. Um, but anyways, I was just enjoying that time together. Yeah. And she was, she was there for me. And so she invited me out for breakfast to go play with her and her kids and you know to have a to have a play day together and so me being me I said yes and I went and we had a great time and we hit it off and our oldest son he really enjoyed playing with their kids and we started to develop this friendship and this relationship and so we would meet at church at least once a week and then we'd go out for play dates or go to each other's house go to the park whatever um, so at the early conversion of our faith Jason still told me that he never wanted to be Catholic and a friend just urged me to keep going anyways, no matter if he wanted to go or not, like I just needed to be committed. And going to the Catholic Church to receive the Eucharist, you know, that it's a moral sin to not go, you know, to church on Sunday and to not receive Jesus. And being the good husband that he was, you know, and by God's grace, he didn't want to split up the family. Mm -hmm. And so he at some point thought, this is stupid that you're going to your church and I'm going to my church. If we're, you're always going to have to go to the Catholic Church, then I might as well just come with you. So he started coming um, to the Catholic Church with me. So, okay, during this whole process um, of our conversion back to the Catholic faith, my husband lost his job. Mm -hmm. um, the company had gone bankrupt. And he gets a phone call that same week, somebody offering him a job. Mm -hmm. And I just thought this was normal and, you know, somebody had heard and whatever. And lo and behold, the man that hired him and offered him a job, his wife was the same one that was showing up for play dates at wow. church yeah they but they didn't know it like she didn't know that I was the wife of the new guy that was being hired and <laughs> they had no clue that we were going to daily mass and whatever so that was another really cool God story in the whole thing yeah. Um, yeah with my husband and you know his conversion to the faith 
it, that was so organic how that happened. Uh, I wasn't talking to him about what I was going through and what I was experiencing. I might come home and listen to uh, a church teaching on apologetics or something like that. And mm -hmm. one time I remember him kind of like stopping what he was doing on the computer and kind of like turning it off and listening. And, sure. you know, and I was trying to like not let him know that I knew that you know, <laughs> he was listening to what I was listening to. Um, but yeah, it was just, it's so timely. And then those questions that he really wrestled with, like what is up with the rosary and these rope prayers? And mm -hmm. um, he was able to actually ask his boss and his mm. boss was a devout Catholic. Okay. Um, and it was through that relationship that led, I, I believe that led Jason to really wanting to become Catholic. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I can't doubt that these three months of continually praying for him it didn't have anything to do with the daily yeah. mass yes. each of those days. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, that's, those were my intentions every day for those three months were mm. to pray for his conversion. Um, we, the friend that I had mentioned earlier about um, teaching me prayer when I was in high school and that kind of thing, she also led us to a Christopher West talk mm. um, where we learned about theology of the body and NFP and natural family planning and mm. the importance of that. You know, we learned about our natural rhythm and pheromones and just all these wonderful things. Um, and the reasons why one would want to choose NFP to be total fruitful and free, to be totally open to give myself to my husband, for it to be a free gift, um, and then to bear fruit, you know, mm -hmm. to be open to God's will. And, you know, what, and it ta also taught us healthy communication mm -hmm. um, as well, because we had to know where we were at, you know, at all times. Mm -hmm. and, and then just working on the other areas of our marriage. So it taught us early on to, that we have a spiritual part of our marriage, an intellectual part, you know, so what are our goals and that kind of thing, communication, um, physical touch. So it just taught us, uh, I, I feel like, a well-rounded balance mm -hmm. um, in our marriage and that it wasn't just... It's, it's not just about the physical act. Like mm -hmm. there's so many ways to be intimate. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's not superficial. Um, I think our kids watching all of this and they, they know our whole conversion story. They know all of this. Um, and them having that solid group of Catholic friends mm -hmm. really led them to um, have a solid, strong Catholic faith, to have a personal relationship with Jesus. Um, at some point, we moved away from there and moved to a new community. And in that new community, the children have those new solid friends and you know relationship in, with Jesus. And they're involved in their faith. Um, but to know that they know their faith. And there's different times where my husband and I, where we f felt like we wanted to weigh from our, our faith. And they are like, no, we are Catholic. And this is why we're Catholic. And so they, they've even held us, you know, um, when we felt weak, which is kind of embarrassing as an adult and, you know, the parent to, you know, admit that there's times where we've even considered leaving the Catholic faith for various reasons. Um, today, I would say that we are madly in love with the faith. Uh, my husband and I enjoy um, giving talks and speaking on theology of the body and mm -hmm. NFP and um, that kind of thing. I also have started a nonprofit, Edge of the Red Sea Ministries, which helps people heal emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And um, just to bring that wholeness, um, I think there's a lot of people struggling with, you know, including myself. You know, at one point, I really was struggling with just some the anxiety and the depression of the world. So whether it's just world, or for me, I had other health issues, and my thyroid and um, autoimmune issues that were contributing to my um, depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And so to get that under control, to also understand um, about boundaries and choices and that kind of thing, and how does Jesus play into that? Mm -hmm. And to have Jesus walk with me through some of these wounds mm -hmm. and to really be there um, you know, for me, to help make new meaning out of my past and my pain and suffering. Um, and I've just felt convicted to share that message with others and to help others heal. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for sharing that. And, yeah. and have you found um, that, that he's using, Jesus is using you, you only, not only your gifts and your talents and, and the theology of the body and the different stuff that you've learned, but also using your woundedness or, or your mistakes uh, to help you help others? Absolutely. Yes. Um, it kind of reminds me of, have you seen The Greatest Showman? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you know that lantern thing mm -hmm. that they have and they put a light in it and then it shines like these beautiful stars and whatever, mm -hmm, yeah. you know, and I, like 
in, our bro in my brokenness, you know, the Lord can really make something beautiful of it. And he can bring light out of that brokenness. And yeah, he is definitely, you, the, I mean, those are the biggest areas where I think he's helping other people heal and lead people to healing is through those wounds. Because mm -hmm. um, I can really relate and I can identify and I know what it's like. Yeah. Yeah, I, I um, have some of the, some overlap, uh, and then also just some, you know, tend, like when I, when I miscarried, um, being able to um, to help other people in that same pain. Mm -hmm. So you know, sometimes we're allowed to not only make choices, right? But yeah. uh, sometimes we have things that happen to us that are not our choices, yeah. right? But we're still able to use that to yes. help others. Um, and, and Jesus has not abandoned us in those moments, right? Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of something my spiritual director used to tell me all the time, that God can make greater good of things, our mistakes, than if they hadn't happened. Mm. And that one is sometimes, you know, hard to wrestle with, but it's true. You know, God, I think, is bringing a lot of victory out of these mistakes. And um, did he want them to happen? No. Did he make them happen? No. And is he making a greater good out of them? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And so... Um, Jason, we have his story on the channel as well on how yes. he became Catholic, um, but it, it's very interesting to see how God was working in you and in him and, and simultaneously. So that was, it was really interesting to see that at play as well. It, how did his family or how did your family react as you became more Catholic and, and really into your faith? Yeah, well, they think I'm weird. You know, I think they think <laughs> that I'm crazy and maybe that we're crazy. <laughs> And, and that's okay, you know, it, it doesn't matter because it's really about us and our marriage and, yeah. um, and God and Jesus and they, they still love us, you know, and we still get together and we can play games and that kind of thing. Um, and I don't remember what saint it, it is, but he says, uh, preach always and when necessary, use words. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of this, the motto and the example that we use in our family is we just try to be love and yeah, yeah. Bring that. I mean, that's you're never going to go wrong. Bringing love to the world, right? Yeah. That's going to be universally accepted. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, you know, having been in the New Age realm for a while and in college, how does that, how, how has that played out? How has it been, how have you seen the impacts of that? You know, now that you've been Catholic for a while, have you seen any impacts or any things that have stuck around because of that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I definitely had opened myself up to a lot of things, demonic activity. Um, and so it's real for those that question it and wonder about it. Um, at one point I was slain in the spirit. Like I went to a healing mass and literally was slain in the spirit. So um, I was lifted up about a foot and then like pushed back about a foot and then laid down. So it was just like a Holy Spirit like mm. thing with that with the evil spirit leaving me and i had there was a time period where i was teaching transcendental meditation um, Ooh, to okay. other age new age yes new okay. age work um and it was that spirit leaving me that mm. caused that to happen okay um and there's been several layers you know to this um i mean every little thing right there those spirits needed to be casted out. Mm. Um, I found the unbound work mm. and model to be super helpful and beneficial. Yeah. Uh, several years ago, about a decade ago, our priest took us through something really similar to that, and we did several rounds of it because um, we needed it. We also had a priest come into our home and say mass uh, because we were being so heavily inflicted. Oh, and I've also found um, encounter ministries mm. to also be really healing. Um, on you know all the different levels, so I'm in, uh, in the first year of formation for Encounter yeah, Ministries. Cool. Yep, um, and so we do an inner healing, a physical healing, um, a deliverance, you know, part of the ministry, and then there's one other one. And I've even found that to just be a good house cleaning, and yeah. you know, because we've already done you know so much. Right. Mm -hmm. And so um, if someone has been into the New Age movement and and they want to get out of it now. Would you recommend they go to Unbound and or Encounter? Like, what would you recommend? Yeah, well, Unbound specializes in deliverance ministry. Mm -hmm. So that would probably be my first go-to, that sure. somebody, you know, seek out an Unbound ministry. The thing is, is we have to really be ready mm -hmm. to depart from whatever it was that we were doing. Sure. Um, and the other thing that Encounter has taught me, I have the different 
natural gifts and charisms. And so I was finding answers to them in the New Age movement 20 years ago, mm. where today in our Catholic faith, there are answers. We call them charisms. Mm -hmm. So these different you know, gifts that we ha can have from the Holy Spirit. Yeah, um, yeah. And so some of mine are healing, knowledge, wisdom, I have a lot, um, <laughs> prophecy, uh, reading of hearts. So, and, and really, it's all for God's glory, right? It's yeah. not for me. It's, yeah. it's for God and for the healing of the people that he wants to heal and the people that he wants to touch. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, you're finding those answers now in the Catholic Church. And so if people are, are like, would I have this gift or whatever, it's not... You're not going to find your answers in the New Age movement in reality, right? Right. At all. And it's, not, it's no longer taboo to talk about in the Catholic religion. There was a time where I would go to different spiritual directors or priests and tell them about things that I was experiencing. Mm -hmm. And I would get, I don't know what you're experiencing. I don't know why God would give you that gift. I don't know what to tell you. Mm -hmm. And today, there, there's so much fruit coming out of the Catholic faith that we have answers um, for people. And it's great to find out about our charisms and our gifts. And yeah. I think everybody needs to know, like, what, what were you created for? What makes you hungry? What are you thirsty for? What are you passionate about? Right. What, what gift of the Holy Spirit does he especially want to work in and through you, yeah. you know, for you to bring it to others mm -hmm. um, for, for God's glory? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I went to a charism workshop as well, and it was so interesting and gave me so much um, direction, you know, and how to better share my gifts because I could better understand my gifts. Um, so yeah, yeah, the Charism Workshops and, and Encounter Ministries, both of those I found really fruitful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you me. so much. I really appreciate you coming. And if you guys want to learn more or uh, hear more testimonies like Lacey's, please stick around, like, and subscribe. <laughs>